Hello besties, welcome to Martinez with Eddie, your ultimate destination for everything Bravo, pop culture, and whatever in between. <laughs> Tonight I have uh, one of my really good friends here, Andy from Beverly Hills. Um, we're going to be talking about Beverly Hills, Miami, Summer House, Vanderpump Rules, and even Traders. I mean, I want to I wanna hear his take on this season, so um, stick around. He's going to be coming on in a minute. I just want to say one thing before he comes on the stage. Um, I just want to remember that this platform that I created, I want to focus on the positive vibe with content creators. There's no beef with anybody. And if you want to have beef with people, this is the wrong place, wrong person. I don't care enough for whatever argument other accounts are having because at the end of the day, they don't pay my bills. And I'm not going to get stressed out and get all over stuff that are not even important. So with that said, I want to bring a content creator who's actually one of my friends, Andy of Beverly Hills. How you doing? Hello, Eddie. How are you? <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. I mean, this was definitely due. We have been talking about uh, doing a collab for a while. And like, I'm, I'm very happy to be here with you because we... I think we have a lot of similarities in the way that we think about uh, Bravo and, and this uh, Bravo verse. So I'm very excited to talk about all the things that you just uh, mentioned and more. How are you? I'm, I'm good. I'm happy you're here. I feel like it has been a long time since you've been on my show. It's been a while. So it's, yeah. it's overdue. It's been overdue. Yeah. Uh, especially because, uh, you know, one of our favorite franchises, Beverly Hills, just ended. So. What would be the best way to start this show that talking about Beverly Hills? So uh, mm -hmm. what do you think about this season? That's the first start. Let's go with the season. How would you rate it? How, what do you think it was great? What do you think he was missing? Let's go. All right. So look, I'm going to, I have been telling, I, I'm, I'm very objective to everything. And I, and I told everyone on my channel and everywhere the same thing that I'm about to tell you. When last season ended, you know, and after they fired Lisa Reno, mm -hmm. they, I, I, I told everyone, guys, prepare yourself because next season is not going to be as any other season that he, we have been watching of Beverly Hills because they are trying to go in a different direction. They are trying to take the toxicity cloud from the show. You know, they want something lighter. And of course, drama will always be part of the show because this is just these girls' personalities and this is just what is going to happen. But it's not going to be that, you know, take down, like, super, you know, heavy stuff. And then, you know, Kyle Richards and the lesbian lover came. But that was a kind of, a kind of like, a, a different thing, you know. But again, this is different than someone, like, actually trying to, like, actively destroy someone's life, like, season after season after season. So when this season starts... I knew immediately that the haters were going to be like, this is boring. Nothing is going on. Like, blah, blah, blah. You know? But I I keep watching, and I was like, well, actually, there are a lot of things that are going on. You know? There are yeah. a lot of different dramas that are starting to to uh, play center stage that maybe before, everything was so focused on one person or one thing that now we can actually see what is going on. You know? I think, for example, something similar is going to happen on the next season of Salt Lake City, right? It's just a change. And because we are so used to, like, the big, big, like, messy drama, now, like, basically people uh, can be like, oh, this is too boring. It is not boring, you know? It's just a little bit different. If we give the chance to these girls, you will see it. And look, a lot of things happen. We, we had drama between uh, Sutton and... And Kyle, we have a drama between Garcelle and 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 Dorit, you know, between Crystal and and Dorit, you know, we have things happening with Erica Jane. We have like, uh, well, eight point five, which honestly we cannot turn, <laughs> you know. And you know, th there was like so many things happening, you know. And I think we we saw a lot of the other personalities kind of like bloom. Um, look at what is happening to Crystal Minka, you know. We we finally saw a different side of Crystal Minkoff, which, by the way, I mean, I do have to see about that, but, like, a, a, a different side of Crystal Minkoff, you know, that we needed to watch. And people love to watch so far. Like, now if you go to social media, everyone is like, oh, my God, we love Crystal, we love Crystal, we love Crystal, because we are finally giving the opportunity to see a little bit more of who Crystal
result really is. So I think that this season, is it the best season ever? Probably not, you know, but you cannot tell me that this was a bad season because it was not a bad season. And and I, the ratings show the same. So I don't know. That's what I think. I, 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 I'm going to agree with that. I feel like most people forget that a lot of the drama needs to be organic and not true. It doesn't have to be a takedown. And we saw that happening on Beverly Hills season after season, especially since Lisa Vanderpump left the show, right? Yeah. It, it, it felt like the purpose of this group of ladies who became the four Fox Fives or whatever it calls was to push out anyone who wasn't part of that clerk, right? It's like the mean girls, like, oh, you can't sit with us if you're not part of our, our, our crew, right? And it was exhausting to watch. So when one by one, this... uh girls were like leaving the show like you know teddy left first and then we have diana who joined and it was random and then we had lisa rena leaving to uh hopefully and marie either leave or bring something to the table because like she brought nothing to the table to be honest that was a waste of diamond um yeah. and like yeah. you like, like you mentioned uh different friendships started to like like be created like Erica Jane became likable because she was not around Lisa Renna. That's the reality of this. I mean, if Lisa Renna was on the show, I'm 100% sure that Erica Jane would not have the same kind of impact with the viewers because she will always be attached to the drama that Lisa Renna brings to the, to the show. And it's yeah. not even a fun type of drama. It's the, drama, the type of drama that makes it unwatchable. Mm-hmm. Right. Yep. Um, I feel like even though there was a lot of drama between everybody in the show, they were able to still have fun. Like, for example, that trip to Spain is by far one of the most enjoyable trip that they have had in a very long time. Yeah, I agree with that. You know, and, and look, we still have the little dramas because, yes, drama is always going to be there. And they know that we are drawn to like drama here and there, you know. But it was enjoyable because at the end of the day, it created connections. It gave us like the, the, you know, those like, for example, the sad moments and all of that. It create even more connection between the girls. When, they're, when we don't have any, any moment to bond, then everyone is just going to keep being strangers to each other. Right? Correct. So uh, I, I, do, I, I do agree with you. I think that this season, um, sh yeah, show us what, what potential can be. Look at what is happening with Miami. Miami, it's so good because of this, you know? All of yes. these ladies literally act like sisters, like real sisters. Like, they can destroy each other and then hug each other on the next episode and forgive each other, you know? <laughs> because that's, like, like how sisters, you know, kind of are, usually. You know, they are not, like, actually trying to, like, end each other, like, life forever, yes. you know? <laughs> so... Um, and I think that's, even, the, that, that's the thing that they're really trying to do with... Even uh, though Larsa was being too much this season by sharing Gertie's... I know, mean, that was, a, that was a whole thing on itself. That was I, a, look, the thing a is low like, point. I, be, I believe that personalities, you know, I mean, we cannot control any, every single person's personality, you know? Yes. And, 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 but I, I also believe that the world is not black and white, you know? And yeah. we, we are in, 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 you know, we're living in a great world and uh, no one really, to me, it's very hard to believe that someone it's 100% evil. You know, there is always some kind of like reasoning behind it. And that's what, but when everyone is like open, we kind of like understand those reasons behind certain behavior. You know what I mean? Yes. And even like in Miami, even with someone like Larsa, she, I'm not, I'm, I'm not on Lance, Larsa's team because I, I have always find it a little bit annoying, but I also like, uh, Gertie is not like my favorite either, but I believe that I don't believe that Larsa did it 100% like as a malicious person. I think honestly on her mind in a weird way, she thought that like talking about this with, with everyone, you know, or, or whatever she did, she was creating a supporting environment for Gertie, you know, but, <laughs> but I mean, of course, like if you think with the reason is like, this is a big news. She literally told you to not tell anyone. So like, you cannot be like, this like person, but like you know, but you you can see 
on the way that when Larsa was doing it, I remember watching the episode back in the day, and I was like, oh my gosh, you are so dumb. What the F are you doing? You know? <laughs> but but she said it with such like, whatever. She, she It didn't cross her mind. And she was not like, oh my God, I am going to call everyone right now and I'm going to tell absolutely everyone that Gordy has cancer. You know what I mean? So it was not malicious. It's just like she doesn't think, you know, but it, that, and I think that's her personality. It's very weird to explain. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I, I do agree that she might have not done it in a malicious way. It just came across as somebody who's so insensitive, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. I mean, it, I mean, also, Larsa is Larsa. She she has shown her personality, you know, every time she opens her mouth. She t tends to be a little kind of like self-centered. So that type of mentality, when you think you're doing something good, it doesn't translate because you're thinking about yourself in the moment, mm -hmm. right? Instead of thinking about the other person and how the other person will react, you're thinking, oh, am I being, I'm being a good person because I'm telling this to somebody else and that's going to make the other person feel better because now they can share the, what they share with me. You know what I'm saying? I I, mean, I don't know. Anyways, we'll, we'll go back to Miami in a little bit, but yeah, yeah, yeah. back let's, to let's Beverly back Hills. To Hills. Uh, <laughs> let's talk about the uh, white party real quick. That's such an iconic staple of Beverly Hills. Uh, the White Party has been, you know, pretty much the finale party for the first like three seasons, I believe. Yeah. Uh, and then there was another one later on. That's when Audrey Malouf came, just invited as a guest. Like we just see her coming in and out. That was even after she separated from from uh, oh. Paul, Paul Malouf. Yeah. So um, it, it's always been a staple. This time was like a million times bigger. Do you think that will you will you be able to send the like, the tension between Mauricio, Mauricio and and Kyle during that party because even though they seem to be happy there was a lot of tension. It like, kind of led look, led to the finale where she had the confessional saying that oh whatever we're going through all this stuff. Yeah, I I I think that look Kyle was over Mauricio. A long time ago, you know, and I think it really, it really shows. I I feel that it was more than, more than just tension. It was like she wouldn't like really care anymore, you know. Like you are, you are throwing this huge party that everyone knows is your party, right? At, like the Richards Umansky or Umansky Richards, whatever you know, family, right? The logic thing is that if you're gonna do an entrance, you're gonna be there, like. With your daughters and your husband, you know it's it's yeah. it's like the obvious. I mean, everyone does it, and the fact that she didn't even care to ask, like, "Oh, where is Mauricio? Like, bring him here," you know, Let's or walk like, together, together. Let's do so. Yeah, exactly. I was like, "Oh my god, the disconnection is so big." Like, uh, when, like when when they showed the reunion, the 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 flashbacks of 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 their marriage and stuff, you know, you can tell the difference uh, of the way that they behave, the disconnection, how really start um to appear through the years um i i look i have always this is weird this is so weird but i have always defended their marriage right uh -huh. i have talked on my channel for years about the cheating allegations because they have always been there and like every single year there is a new person with a new cheating allegation you know and we have gone through so much but i'm i have been always one of the people that say like look we are going to be talking about this because it's what is happening out there. But there has never been, like, proof, you know, of the actual um, cheating. Affair. You know, you, there, there is no pictures. There is no videos. Literally, the first time ever that we have seen Mauricio holding hands with another woman was with uh, Emma from Dancing with the Stars. Yes. Ever. You know, we have never really seen nothing from Mauricio. So I was very much always, like, pro their, 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 their marriage. Because I, I do love them together. I love their family. And I think, like, the daughters are, are, are so good, you know. And I think the family unit, like, in itself, it was so good. But now, I mean, we, we realize that they were just playing into, like, this game. And I do believe that eventually, if you, if you are not really connected with your partner, you know, those cracks are going to start being bigger and bigger. And I think that, yes, just like Kyle said, uh, you have kids. You start working. You start doing things here. You start doing the things there. The last thing that is in on your mind is like my relationship or like how my marriage is doing because 
your marriage is there. You're already married. You're already a dad. Like, what else? Now we have to just work, you know, and make things happen. And and uh, and that that last part, like uh, with the white party, it was like that ending. Like honestly, it gave us like that that thing that will tell us, oh, they're done. Like there yeah. is nothing else, you know, uh, happening in here because they just don't care about each other. And they they don't hate each other. They just don't care about each other anymore. You know, they're like pure friends, pure roommates. You know, like <laughs> oh, you can do, you can be doing whatever you want. Like I really don't care as long as it's not uh, it's not affecting me. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, I I cannot believe the the rumors of the cheating for a very long time. I just, like you said, like, we didn't have any proof. We didn't have anything. Uh, and, I mean, honestly, I did not care enough for their marriage to, like, be invested on following whatever they're doing, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, but I always sensed their dynamic was kind of forced for the cameras at times. Or, like, they were trying to portray this perfect marriage all the time. You know, when you are trying to to add that way, especially on a reality TV show, you know that you're trying to hide something. I mean, this like perfect, like pick a fence type of marriage are just on the books. Yeah, that's not how real relationships are. And I always felt like Mauricio was always like wandering eyes and kind of like doing his own thing at times. Um do I believe that the cheating part was what destroyed the marriage? I don't think so. I think Kyle went through a process of like realizing things, maybe with, you know, losing her friend and, uh, you know, starting to like open up to other experiences in life. She realized that, you know what? I don't want to be trapped in this and I want to get out. And it's normal. It's okay. Because I'm a hundred percent sure that this cheating allegation and this like, you know, war in the streets type of thing has been happening for many years. And she probably knew. And she stayed in the marriage maybe because it was comfort for her. Mm -hmm. And that happens all the time in marriage, especially when it comes to like, you know, public figures. They just became so comfortable with each other. They're like, okay, we can do whatever we want separately, but we don't bring it to the house. Look, the, but, the, what they're doing right now is a statement to that. The fact that they are still living together and they are not moving forward with the divorce, it's it's exactly what is what what is going on probably in their marriage for a very long time. You know, it's kind yeah. of like, ah, why are we gonna go through all of this? We, I mean, they, I I believe that they love each other as friends, you know, yeah, and exactly. that they have their family and stuff. You know, we are not fighting. Why are we gonna do things? I think that was probably their marriage. Forever, she was not emotionally fulfilled. You know, we've <laughs> known that for a very long time. So it's a, a full circle moment, right there. <laughs> full circle moment, yeah. But she was like, I, I look, I do believe that she, after what happened to her friend, you know, I think that she literally have a full on midlife crisis. You know, I think uh, she woke I mean, up one day and she said, like, "What the f I'm doing here?" You know, like yeah. I'm with this guy who, you know, I don't hate, but is is not giving me like like love you know and 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 my kids are older Portia is about to live in like three years probably you know like what i'm gonna what what is gonna be about me like is this the life that i'm gonna be living for the rest exactly. of my life and then she kind exactly. of like a spiral out of control you know and then she met morgan wade you know and like all of that but like i feel that 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 was what, what was going on you know we know that i was the one who initiated the separation marisa was fine marisa was he didn't give a shit. He was doing his thing. He was doing his thing. Yeah, he was like, oh, everything is fine. Like, I don't care, you know. Like, I can go out and do whatever I want to do, you know. And 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 she was the one who really, really needed, like, this change in her life, you know. And, I agree. and the depression and everything kind of, like, came in. And I don't think it's a bad thing. You know, at the end of the day, I, I, you should not be staying in a marriage for the kids for the other guy, for appearances, for absolutely anything. Like, if you are not really happy, then just go out. out there and do whatever you want to do, especially if your kids are already older. Like, who cares? You know? I agree. Um, but it, it play a big part of the fact that they are in front of the camera. And also, like, the part of that when I, like, I, I support Kyle in many things, but the part that it really, like, stresses me is the part that she thinks that she doesn't own an explanation to anything. 
because yeah. now we're thinking like, I'm so sorry, but you have been on a reality show for 13 years. You have shown <laughs> up, and like you said, you have portrayed this pitch perfect marriage for 12 years. Do you think that people are not going to have uh, questions? Do you think that people are not own any kind of explanation? Of course we are. We want to know what the, what the, uh, is going on. And, and then when you are going around with this girl playing wannabe lesbian, like then what what are we doing here? You know, you know, out of nowhere you have to you have to give an explanation. You know, you know what it remind me of? Remember that group from the early two thousand tattoo? Yeah. And they were yeah. wanna be lesbian, they played lesbian in front of the camera, but they were not lesbian for real life. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh my god, because I look at Kyle and I keep saying she's not a lesbian. I'm so sorry. Like oh. I, my gaydar doesn't move at all when it yeah, comes no. to Kyle. You know, I'm like, you're not a lesbian. You know, you she's I believe that that Morgan, so this is what I like very deeply believe. I think that she lost her best friend from her child, you know? And this is what someone that she loved a lot. And Mauricio is not giving it, giving her anything, you know? So she goes out and she finds someone who they might have something in common, and then she goes and do a full-on transfer from, you know, the, the, the things that she, the, the friendship and the love that she had from her best friend to this new girl, who represent everything that she wants to be. She she said it. She Morgan Wade represents freedom. Represent. Yeah. I want to do whatever I want to do. I, if I want to fill my body with tattoos, if I want to go, I, I jump from the bridge. That's what Morgan Wade will do, and that's what Kyle Richards wanted to do in that moment. You know, with her life. So she goes on and do a full transfer of feeling, and now oh, now Morgan is my new super BFF. Now. Do I believe that they were helping each other? Yes, also. You know, I think that there was a little bit of like, hey, girl, come to the show, you know, be here with me, play little like lesbians a little bit, you know, and you will put, uh, your name will be out there, you know, because I'm so sorry, no one knew who Morgan was like ever before, you know, maybe like, I'm let me like listen to country music, I guess. Like, some people knew who she was. I just, I, I, I listened to country music, but she was never in my radar. Um, but I, I know that she has played like state cello, whatever. Well, I have you call. seen I have seen like like the little like the the yeah the, the concerts that she does, you know. I but, mean I'm um, just I'm just saying like in general, like you are now on a <laughs> national and international platform. In a platform. You know? That's right. Yeah. Yes. So of course it's gonna be a win win situation because also we know that Kyle is a producer and she loves to produce also her own moment. And I think it's a little bit of everything, you know, and I think she said, shit, let's just do this. You know, play with the audience. I'm gonna free myself. Also, it's a great way to start my separation process with Mauricio. You know, and I think it's just it was just a mix of everything. It was just a little bit too messy. You know, and I think she and, made and, you love control of everything at that point. And you hit the nail in the head when you said that Morgan represents everything that Kyle wa want to do or wishes to do. Like, mm -hmm. be free, be careless, be. You know, like, if you want to get a tattoo, I'm going to get a tattoo. If I want to wear a freaking uh, cowboy hat and whatever, you know what I'm saying? Um, like I said, like, I always believe that Kyle's personality, this, like, perfect Beverly Hills women and, like, tr trying to be, like, like, uh, like society women or whatever, to me always felt like it was her forcing herself into something she was not mm -hmm. especially because she wanted so badly to be a, you know lisa find the punk at the beginning of the, the the show like if we watch back to season one and two and three when she's still not as rich as she is right now she always wanted to have the like closeness to lisa find the punk right mm -hmm. and be like her it's so funny how kyle tends to morph into the person that she thinks is her best friend yeah. Because if that you is, watch back yeah. in the day, she wanted to be like Lisa Vanderpump. Then she wanted to be cowboy Kyle because I, I guess she started to hang out with uh horse girl Teddy. And then <laughs> now she's now she's rock punk uh slash country because she met Morgan. That's what I always told people. Yeah. When the whole Morgan thing started to happen, I will I told people I was like I know every blogger in the planet is now saying that Kyle is bisexual, that she is lesbian, that she having a relationship with Morgan, like sexually talking and, and emotionally talking. People forget that people can 
really build friendship that are strong. Like I have many straight guy friends. Doesn't mean that they're gay. They're not bi. They're nothing like that. Yeah. But we hang out. We go to bar. We drink beer. We listen to music. I mean, I grew up in that environment, right? Yeah. So, I mean, you do create bonds with people that not necessarily are in your same sexual orientation, and it, that's completely normal. But I do think that Kylie is the type of person when the, the, when she finds comfort in somebody, she tends to morph into that person. How many times you see like couples do the those couples that like they start dating and then one start dressing like the other one and all this stuff? Yeah. It's kind of that stuff, yeah. but put it in in a friendship level. I never believed that Kyle and and Morgan were like a couple. I never believed that. It never gave me that vibe. And the more they did it for attention, or like the more like stuff they did, the less I believed it. Like that music video where they were like being sexy, what I was like, yeah. If people fall for that stuff. They don't understand how the entertainment business works. It was so prepared, you it's, know. Yeah, and, it was and, planned. And, and Kyle saying like, "Oh, that was done like months before," and that I was like, mm, "Girl, come on." Like, <laughs> 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 we all know. I mean, we all know. And I, I, I sometimes I wish like like they were more like real in that sense and being more like, "Yeah, I mean, we did it because we wanted to get a cloud." You know, like everyone was talking about this. Like, who gives a shit? You know, that's. That's literally how the game is played, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, I I, I believe that um, I don't know. I think moving forward, I think Kyle at some point the midlife crisis it's kind of like either it's gonna end, you know, and I think she eventually is gonna have to make a choice. All but if I, I mean we already are like what almost two years into the separation. I think so because they really separated a long time ago. It's just like yeah. we didn't know about it, you know. So I, I feel that I feel that that part of her life is going to be like honestly over, and I believe that um, that she's gonna she's gonna ha have a whole different life, but it's going to be a little bit hard for her to find who Kyle is by herself, you know. Yeah. I think she, like you said, yeah, she has been copying everyone. Even when she be started becoming friends with Lisa Rena and Erica Jane, she started looking like them, you know. Yep. She started like, like doing. She's, she's. I mean, she's a follower, <laughs> you know. She, like, she will, <laughs> it's a weird follower because she, she wants to be center stage. I mean, she has been center stage for a while, but her real personality is kind of like I just want to attach to someone, you know. I just yeah. want to like. Like, I know how to do stuff, but I prefer to be attached to someone else. It, she it, wants it, to be live by everybody, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but I don't know. I don't know what is going to be, like, now moving forward into the show, how it's going to be. I'm pretty sure that everyone is going to return except 8.5, which I'm fine with it. So, uh, I think everyone, and they're probably going to bring, they, I hope they bring someone that we can, like, connect, you know, because... I don't know who is in casting, but they need to be fired. Like literally, from <laughs> Diana Jenkins to Anne Marie, like WTF? You know, like we need we need someone. And I even know people who have been interviewed to be part of this show. I'm like, why are these people not on the show? And these like random people with those <laughs> weird backgrounds on the show. It doesn't make any sense, you know. I agree. Um, Whoever but, is doing the casting for Summer House needs to move to to. To Beverly Hills oh, because totally. this this year was a home run. They hit yeah. the freaking, bah, and they just this season, hit a home run. It. Yeah, they did it this season. I was I was so worried about that because last season to me was hard to watch from of Summer House. But, so uh, uh, yeah. let's talk about Erica Jane before we jump into the reunion. Um, okay. We saw at the end of the, the the season she had her little like performance and all this stuff, and then we had a two part episode that was airing the same day which was really bizarre to me like make it a long special don't make it two episodes didn't make any sense if they aired at the same time at the same night uh it was uh better all on blondes whatever uh show where we saw her you know building her show in vegas um obviously the the white party kind of was like her big comeback mm. to the stage and whatever um, how do you feel about that? I'm just gonna say one thing. I'm gonna try to be as 
non-biased in this case because everybody knows how I feel about Erica Jane, but I'm going to forget for two seconds about, you know, the it's... legalities and all this stuff. I'm going to do it yeah. just because I want to focus on her as a performer, I guess. I mean, the thing is, I mean, it's, 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 it's very hard, you know? We yeah. literally just finished watching the uh, Housewife and the Hospital part two. Yeah. You know? So we know we already we are charged now with that information, and I think that was the reason why they did this, uh, the uh, the the special like just the two parts, one after the other one, is because they didn't want to spend. They know that a lot of people were not going to be watching, especially after that uh, documentary. Like I know that for a fact. So um, that was one of the reasons, and I, it's it's very hard. Look, the problem with Erica Jane is that she had it all to be like this gay icon you know and if we if, if you move back in the day pre Tom Gerardi scandal a lot of us were like oh my god this is like everyone was so excited you know yes it's expensive to be me i don't give i don't know <laughs> zero fucks you know we were like dancing it was everywhere here in west hollywood you know and she had it all. I, I'm not denying that she knows how to put that show because when you have that money to put that show, then of course, you know, you can do amazing things. You know, it's yeah. kind of like uh, Madonna spending like, I don't know how many millions from their own pocket to do the halftime show of the Super Bowl. Like if you have the coins, you can do it all. I mean, it, and it's going to be amazing, right? Um, it, again, it's a little bit hard for me because I'm very pro- Victims and very pro, like everything that we have been seeing, you know, from Marco Marco to like, I mean, everything. It's, it's so complicated that to me, watching her trying to keep going with her life when she keeps putting on these fights to, you know, uh, I don't know, yeah, to, to, to don't do the right thing. I just don't feel like how can, how can we be like really supportive of anything you know yes she knows how to dance yes he well kind of know how to sing but you know that everything <laughs> everyone that she that everything that she does is very very out of tune you know but like you know like she know i mean i don't think she's a singer she's definitely like a showman you know she knows yeah, how she's to a performer she knows how to do a show and I, yeah. I don't think that has never been a question you know she knows how to dance she knows how to do things right um is, is, is her combat gonna be like huge to be very honest with you, like I don't, I, I don't know. It's very much to me. It's very hard to watch her or to or to listen to one of her songs now. I'm being like, yes, Erica, you got this, because it's always in the back of my mind. Especially after part two, like watching everything that happened with with Christopher from Marco Marco, it literally broke my heart. You know, yeah. so I'm like, I, I'm always thinking like, you destroy. And in this case, uh, Erica literally destroyed this man's life. You know, yeah. it was not Tom Girardi. So I'm like, how? You know, uh, no one asked for this special, you know, and they are really trying to like, <laughs> like, like making fetch happen, you know. And I think everyone, I mean, look, the normal people who follow Erica Jane are white gay people, you know. So <laughs> white, like uh, twinkish people, you know. So like, I'm like. Okay, like, do you, at the end of the day, I mean, she, she's going to keep doing it until something big, like, happen legally, you know? And we cannot stop it for it, you know? But do, do am I going to be here cheering for her? No, you know? But yeah. at, at some point, I'm not going to be hating anymore. I'm just going to, like, do whatever you want to do, you know? I, I, I don't really care anymore. I believe that she has some parts. I mean, the way that she kind of, like, stood up for for Kyle, you know, and, and the, the advice that she will give to Kyle when she was like having the breakdown. Those are nice moments, you know, and, yeah. and I feel that, you know, even bad people have good moments sometimes, you know. Um, but that that to me is never going to be enough to completely forget everything that, that has happened before, yeah. you know. And and yes, yes, she's a great show, showman. I, uh, I mean, I, it's, it's you know? funny you said like, Nobody asked for this show. I remember when I was at BravoCon and they played the, the trailer for the very first time because the trailer came out at BravoCon last year. Yeah, yeah. I'm like watching. I was like, what the fuck am I watching? 
yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I, just, I, was like, I remember like a lot of people being shit? confused, like what? You know, like yeah, that was so we, random. It was so it, I mean it was supposed to be like the big big reveal, but it wasn't like an exciting big reveal. We were like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't even want to go watch her show in Vegas. Now, now let alone a show about how she made that show happen. Like, yeah. no, not interested. I did watch it because I watched it because it was on, and I was like, you know, let me see it. I, I, I felt that at time it was very produced, like all the crying and all the like, uh, the fight with Mikey and stuff. I was like. It seemed like it was made for reality TV. Yes, I mean, it, it, it is what it is. Uh, I, like you said, I'm not going to be buying any merch. I'm not going to go to Vegas to see her. I'm not going to see her if she comes here to New York. I don't care about her music career enough to support her. I always say, like, okay, I mean, if you're trying to rebuild your life, and change the image you have with the public, at least take some accountability and do the right thing. Because, I mean, we watched on that uh, Housewife at the Hustle or whatever, uh, second part, that she met with the with the, um, with the the victim. But then at the end, they're like, I mean, she came, she, she hugged people, but uh, we still haven't heard from her after then, you know? Yeah. So it, it, it just, she is somebody who hasn't understand the damage that was caused to these people or the people that she did wrong like Marco Marco. So um, how uh, there's no way that I'm going to be supporting her whatsoever. I literally, mean, for those, for those who do, for those who do like, great. I mean, you have more content to, to see yeah, Erica okay. Jane uh, pat, uh, pat her pussy or whatever she says. Uh, but it, it Honestly, I never, I mean, I never felt like she was that great of a performer. Does, does she put on a show? Yes. I mean, I, and I always said, like, gay men have this thing where we are so attracted. It's like a shiny thing <laughs> to blonde women who can't lip sync. It's like, yeah. it's, in our, it's, in, it's in our DNA. So it happens that this woman on, on Bravo uh, does that. Uh, obviously, every gay man who watches the Bravo is like, oh my gosh, yeah. Erica Jane is the best. And like, if you really watch her performance, she doesn't have that like big pop star uh, stage presence. She just knows how to pat her pussy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I agree. You know, look when when she when she after when she was meeting the victims and they were like. So what made you do this? Oh no, why you didn't do this before? And she's like, because no one asked me. Girl, no one needed to ask you. <laughs> to do this. You know, it's like, like it was so. I, I mean, like you say, she did things so wrong. But I think at the end of the day, she did things wrong because she honestly doesn't give. And before. and the reality you know? and, and and I'm gonna be honest, and I had said it many times. I never thought that. Erica Jane was directly involved with the scamming. I never thought or said or believed that she was like in this like room sitting in a computer, like I'm going to steal their money. No, I do think that Tom and his people were the one doing the shit. But when you, but, but she found out about it even before it became public. So she was ready and prepared to not say anything and, and protect Tom and, and the money that they made because she wanted her money back. That's yeah. the reality here. She didn't want to give her money to these people. She was the first one fighting against like selling the house or the, the one that wanted to get paid before the victim. Like, no, they tried to sell it to give the, the victim their money back. Not to you, Erica. You already paid millions of dollars, you know, to like your costumes and your clothing and your trips and your private jet and all the stuff, you already had your part of the pie. Now it's time to give the other people who actually deserve their money back, right? And she doesn't understand that part. That's why even Garcelle, in the in the flashback that they show in the reunion and, and during the season, it's like, hey, it's not that you were the bad person, that you don't show any remorse. None. Zero. Nothing. Yeah. I agree. Zero, zero, like, done. Sure. It's just, but we, I, I try because I know that 
we are never gonna get that. It's just ne- never, never. Gonna never gonna happen. That's why I, I, like- I wanna. Sorry. I want to share this question, so I want you to answer like before we, because I want to make sure that we answer this. Did you enjoy Erica's performance or Adriana's performance in the finales? And who's the worst singer, uh, Tom Sandler or Erica Jane? <laughs> well, look, this is gonna sound like super bad, but like first of all, Adriana, even though no one knows knew her song over there, you know she did, and I'm uh, uh, like it was an amazing job for like all the like 200,000 people you know so it's it, she was not surrounded by a bunch of yes people like everyone could be like shut the fuck up get out you know get out of here you know and and she actually put on a show erica jane is doing a party you know of like i don't know 200 people or whatever and and everyone or not no one is the only one who had balls to say anything was denise richie you know <laughs> So like no one no, like whatever you know so uh, they're completely different and at least Tom Sandoval sings live you know so even if it is not good at least he sings live so <laughs> it's, 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 it's it's to me I mean to me Erica is just everything is kind of like a little bit of a fraud with her you know like everything it's just a production it's just what money can buy if you have money with for, to to get producers to get dancers. To get look at look at what they said uh the house in front of the house there. she was uh with people who danced with Britney Spears who danced with Madonna he had the best producers like the money could buy out there if you have all of that of course you can produce great yeah. great music you and sing. you don't even have to sing because everything yeah. is out of tune so yeah. I mean yeah. good for her though I mean if yeah. that's her if, if that's her dream go and live your best life just do the right thing for once just do the human thing for once that's I all we karma ask is for get her. i think karma is the only thing that is going to be able to get her at some point in her life but i think i think we are all tired i think we all are like Ugh, this is annoying nothing is nothing is happening so far you know i mean the bit the the, the next big thing was that she was going to have to go to trail because of the marco marco situation you know that was kind of like the, the the latest thing, and now she's even fighting that, of course. So um, <laughs> it's 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 like we just with Erica Jane. I think we just have to put it like on a side and just wait until something happens, which is the exact same reason why Bravo is keeping her on the show is because they want to have that moment again where they can pick up the cameras and follow her to the to the courtroom, you know, and see what is going to happen there. But yeah. Is she giving like? Is she giving me storylines? Is she giving me like whatever? No, she's just right now. She's just there, you know. So yep, technically she's just there talking to her psychologist or therapist or something, and uh, vacuuming her couch every other episode. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> her one couch. <laughs> yeah, it's like we're gonna make. 20 scenes right now of your back, <laughs> vacuuming so we can like use <laughs> super in the floor. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, that was her, all her like, like, cut away from her like house is <laughs> either vacuuming or super. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, let's talk about the reunion real quick. Um, I mean, there's uh, not much to talk about about the reunion because the reunion was straightforward. They were yeah. having drama onto the drama. Ended because Sutton has to go to the hospital, and they were like, "Okay, so now, so now, now what should we talk about?" <laughs> yeah. Look to me, the only thing that is savable from the reunion is, um, okay. So I know, like, look, I'm I'm living for Crystal right now. You know, I'm living for yeah. Crystal. I think she's on her best moment, and I know for a fact that she has talked and make so many scenes through the show and at the reunion that end up being cut completely, you know? I think right now it is not a secret of all about the past, well, the things of Anne-Marie and her husband, you know, we have all talked about it, and, and the post, the transphobia, and the, like all of the things that have happened before, you know? All of that was talked about on the show and at the reunion by Crystal Minka, and Bravo decided to cut that at all. That's why I, don't, I think that she is not going to be returning because Bravo does not want to get into that mess. You know, it's going to create a huge 
political issue, social issue, you know, you're going to have everyone giving their opinions, you know, and I think Bravo is like, we just don't want to mess with this. And if Anne-Marie returns next season, they're going to have that's to talk everything about that they're going to be talking about, you know? Yeah. And plus, like at that moment was only the transphobic uh, stuff, you know, now you have the allegations against the husband. Sexual harassment. Yeah. So, sexual harassment and all of that. So like, I don't, th- I don't see that happening at all. But I love that Crystal at least is shown to the girls and to the producers who are watching the footage, you know, before they edit it, like, bitch, I'm here to play, you know? And I, I love that she called out Dorit, that she called out Kyle, that she called out, like, she's calling everyone out at this point, you know? So I'm like, I agree. you know, I, I'm like, okay, Crystal, do your thing. I, 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 we, we have been waiting for this, so now it is time for you to, like, and I think it the fact that even with Sutton and Garcelle gone, she finally got to be next to Andy Cohen. That's, I, I was going to say it, that. Yeah. She got first seat. After, <laughs> like, when yeah. Sutton and Garcelle left, she actually got moved to the first seat. And I'm going to tell you one thing. That means something. Because yeah. they could have easily have, like, put, like, Dorit on the other side or, like, a right? favor or whatever. But no, they moved Crystal and they, they switched Anne Marie to the other side next to yeah. Crystal instead of, like, moving somebody else. You would have thought, like, maybe, be like, okay, Dorit has been in the show for longer. Let's move Dorit to the other side to oh. balance that, whatever. Because they the drama I- with, <laughs> at that point, the drama with Dorit was over. Because I think, I think Dorit... that Andy Cohen was like, do not put Dorit next to me because I will fall asleep. <laughs> like, do not make that happen, you know? <laughs> I, you know what? I love when he yawns every time that she talks. I know that he's doing it sometimes. Like, this time was on purpose. Like, you know that he's like, let me just do it this time again because I want to, like, cut, the, like, the, the tension, yeah, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I, 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 it cracks me up so, so much. I love that part. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it now it's kind of like the tradition, and it, it just like the read has, gets so pissed when that happened, you know, <laughs> and it's just so funny. Um, so, yeah, first of all, Crystal, I think she did a great job. I think she's one of the best things, you know. Kyle, we get from Kyle what we get from Kyle. She's never going Nothing. to be fully open, <laughs> you know, about everything. I think Kathy gave us more tea than than yeah. Kyle did. Well, she know? was getting ready in 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 the in the it's makeup cool. room in the, the trailer. In she like, gave us like all she gave us all the answers that we wanted when she was getting her makeup. Done. <laughs> yeah, you know, and um, I think that um, okay, uh, Kathy. Okay, so Kathy Hilton. Of course, I love Kathy Hilton, and I, I I love to watch her on the TV. Like all of us, I don't understand why she was there, you know, because she was not part of the reunion. And I, I in my mind, I'm thinking, so they're bringing Kathy, but they're not even bringing Denise, who actually got a there. lot to like do on the on the season, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, I mean, it was, literally we got a third part of the reunion because of Kathy Hilton. You know, yeah. because they could have just put everything on just two parts, and that that yeah. be that be it. You know, uh, yes, they will have to show you who is the queen of Beverly Hills. I mean, she uh, command that like respect, and she's like, okay, I'm gonna be here. Doesn't make any sense, you know. She's there to support <laughs> Kyle, but like, okay, and the ratings, the like, people went crazy just because Kathy Hilton was there. You know, so like, I think they were they they really tried to play all of their cards. You know, I think I think connected from the beginning they were so scared of how this season was gonna go rating wise you know that they were like let's just put everything as much as we can let's just throw everything out there so people see that we have the tools going to make out. you know a great show yeah. and um yeah kathy i mean kathy did her thing she was just there to literally protect Kyle, you know yeah and i i do believe that that's a way to reintroduce Kathy to the show. I do think she's going to come back next season. They've been wanting her to come back and maybe now that she's in a better place with Kyle, she's going to come back. Because the reason why she left the show was because she didn't want to be around Kyle. They were like having those like issues with the family. And you know that Kathy is one of those people that don't want all her family issues on a screen all the time. Mm -hmm. Yes, they like reality TV, but they like to be in control of the narrative. Right? So... For her to come back meant, like, talk about all the issues that she, she had with Kyle and, like, repair the relationship on a camera and all this stuff. And she didn't want to do all that stuff. But now that they're past that, it's easier for Bravo to be like, you know what, come back to the show, you know? And you know that she's going to say yes if, yep. if she's asked. So, um, 
because she likes to be around, you know, the girls and having fun and whatever. Um, I think it's crazy that people are saying that Sutton went to the hospital to avoid some kind of Kathy thing. I think that's not only stupid, but also very um, lack of compassion in understanding on how some medical emergency happens. Um, I have high blood pressure tendency. I take medication for it and I have experienced myself um, medical, you know, moments that were kind of scary. So I understand where she was coming from. Like the same thing happened with Crystal when they were in Spain, like high blood pressure is no joke. Mm. And it comes in the most random place because you never had symptoms. You can have high blood pressure and not feel that damn thing. But when the high blood pressure gets out of control, that's when you feel like you're dying. So yeah. um, I understand why son was like, I, I'm i scared. But people are like, oh, she's scared of Kathy. Like, no, she's scared of the symptom that she's going through in the moment. Yeah. Like, she yeah. feels she's fucking dying. <laughs> like, yeah. dude, like, I think, so I think, crazy. like, I don't know. I Look, I, I, I 100% agree with you. I don't believe that it was fake at all, you know? No. I think that she was going through, like, the whole thing. Um, I don't know if Kathy shocked her so much that her her, her blood uh, thing went through the roof, but I, I don't know. I don't know exactly. I, but I also don't believe that because Sutton, she, I think she can hold herself, you know, and I think yeah. she will be able to, like, I don't think they were going to fight, and even when Kathy says I was going to come for her, I, I just think that she was going to say, uh, to ask her, like, why did you talking. have to say about the sister thing? Why yeah. did you say the, those things? You know that, but I don't think there, there's nothing. It, it was not like the Lisa Rena situation. You know, it was exactly. not like it was like that big. You know, a thing. Um, so yeah, I don't believe I don't believe that it was fake at all. Um, look, I do think that Garcelle should have stayed. You know, because they could have just have sent a producer. I understand that because she was a friend and she was worried. You know, but I do believe that we needed to have someone from the two of them. To do to do have some kind of conversation of what ne it needed to be talked with um, with Kathy Hilton because oh she was brought also for that reason you know because her yeah. name was brought <laughs> you know so it's like okay now they're gone like what are we gonna talk about like you know like what's the point and the, and and I uh, I think it's funny when people say like Garcelle and Sutton don't contribute to the show and as soon as they both left the stage of that reunion, that reunion ended. Mm -hmm. Because after that, there was a lot of nothing with a side of nothing. Plus, we need the people, I don't know if they know this or not, but like, Kathy Hilton is very good friends with Sutton, with and uh, Crystal, and Garcelle. Like, the yeah. three of them, they're very close, they go out all the time. And I think, I, I don't remember, I think it was Kathy or something, or, or, or so, I don't remember, that posted recently that Literally, like, uh, if we hate each other, why are we going to go and, and, and meet? Kathy or, posted that uh, as a response yeah. to somebody on, Kathy, on Instagram. You know? They, don't, they yeah. don't hate each other. I mean, they, I think Kathy wanted to just ask her, you know, like, what did you say? What, what, first of all, why did you feel like a third sister? Because honestly, I have never seen that relationship <laughs> between Sutton and Kyle, you know? And second of all, I mean, why, why will say something like that on camera, you know? And like, why yeah. bring... The conversation but i don't think it was that big of a deal so yeah i think people saying that it was fake it's also like a little bit just creating drama out of nothing because it wasn't i, I don't think it was that deep she got sick she needed to go you know and and that's what she needed to do yeah. and uh for my understanding i mean for what i know it wasn't like she went to the hospital and she was fine the next day she it, it took her almost like weeks for yeah. her to go back to her normal self that's what people don't know. People say, oh, she went to the hospital, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah, but she didn't just went to the hospital and, and came out like just like hunky dory and all fine. And it's it took a scary her weeks thing. to come back to, to, to herself. Yeah, it's a scary thing. Like I, I don't I don't suffer from high blood pressure, but when the last time that I went to Colombia, you know, the altitude is it's very different. Yeah. And it 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 took me like it, 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 it was very bad and my my blood pressure was through the roof. And, it, and I was by myself in a hotel. I thought that I was going to, like, have a heart attack right there, you know. And, yes, I have to be, like, on, on a medicine for, like, two weeks. I have to, like, do a, a whole bunch of things, you know. 
And um, and it's scary. I mean, like you said, it's so out of nowhere. You have no idea yep. what is going on. You know, you have all of these weird uh, symptoms that you have never felt before, you know, and, and it's scary. Yeah, because it, like you said, like, it's not like a one thing. It's like you feel so many things in your body, like headache, uh, feel weak, you feel nausea, you feel uh, shaky. It's a lot of stuff that people don't understand. So, well, we will have to wait until next season to see how that conversation goes because I'm pretty sure they're going to have to have it at one point. Oh, yeah, um, 100%. And I also think that moving to next season, uh, the one if they bring her back, which I think they will, Dorit is going to be in such a hard position next season. I mean, agree. I think uh, Crystal is coming for her because Dorit has not been able to like shut up since the reunion, you know, and saying a bunch of things. Kyle is coming from the uh, Dorit. I don't know if you saw that. I think this come today or yesterday that Dorit was saying like, "Oh, I, I was not the one who leaked the text message." Girl, you literally did. Like you literally put, like read the message in front of the camera. Like, what do you think was going to happen? You know, but uh, right. and. Yeah, and, and she's coming from, like, ever. I think next season is going to be interesting. I think this season was the perfect transitional season from, you know, all the Lisa Renna stuff to what we are going to be having now. But now yeah. next season, it's kind of like, okay, now we are playing. Now we know the new relationship, you know? Yeah. And hopefully, hopefully they bring one or two good housewives that we can connect for a long time, you know? Yes, I agree. I agree. I, it's time for for somebody to do the casting in Beverly Hills that actually understands like what the show needs and mm -hmm. uh, bring new blood that actually comes to the show, trying to create a bond with everybody on it instead of coming as a mouth thief of one of the housewives already because that's what yeah. happened. Look what happened with Diana. She came on the show to go after Sun because Lisa Rona told her to do so and failed. And then you have um, and Marie, and Marie, who came to the show as Kyle Richards' mouthpiece again to go after Sutton, and he fell so miserably. So, um, I, I think that somebody's gonna come into the show. Yes, it has to be introduced by a housewife. You know, they have to have a connection to somebody. But come on the show as somebody who wants to be friends with everybody and make your own. Uh, uh, like your own decision on who you who you agree with or or who you're gonna become friend with or whatever. Not just come on the show with a with an agenda that is not even part of of your life because you haven't been part of the show ever and you already have a beef with somebody. Like, come yeah. on, <laughs> yeah, doesn't make any fucking sense. Yeah, they just came screaming like, "I hate you, bitch!" It's like, "Who are you? Like, <laughs> like why are you here? <laughs> you just got here." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like uh, Anne-Marie, she came so, uh, so like, charged against against everyone, you know? And it's like, we don't know you. Like, we have never heard about you, ever. We've never seen your house, let alone, yeah. like... Erin <laughs> uh, wants us to answer this question. Did anyone surprise you at the reunion? Um, I'm just... To me, just going to keep being, like, Crystal, you know? I I... I knew some stuff of, about the reunion before it aired, so like I kind of like already knew what was going to happen. But still, watching again, Chris like, having the opportunity to like really shine, to me that was very big, you know, because it's like, um, it's like she was finally giving the opportunity to do what she was there to do. And again, before yeah. because I know that so many things of her has been cut from the show, you know. I was like, okay, this is the this is the time, you know, come for come for Dorit, come for Khan, come for Erica, you know, do all the things that you are supposed to be doing to show the world and that it's going to be impossible to cut so you can show the world why you deserve to be here. And it's yeah. thick, you know, everyone, like I said, everyone is really, really liking Crystal, you know, this this season because they are showing us more. I think that Crystal was going to be phased out. And that's why they brought Anne Marie. And then Anne Marie ended up being such a big disappointment, you know. And I think <laughs> that Crystal proved herself, you know, being like, I deserve to be here. And yeah. I don't know what is the reasoning of the of the producers to be cutting so many things from the re from, from Crystal. I don't know if they wanted to perpetuate the 
quiet Asian woman stereotype. I don't know what really was going on in there. But finally, Crystal is saying, I'm here and I'm here to stay and you have to stop doing this bullshit. Yeah, and, uh, and and it worked. And to me, that was a uh, that was a very nice uh, surprise. Okay. I'm gonna say that I was surprised. I wasn't like surprised, but I was very proud of Sutton as a first chair this season because everybody thought that Sutton was the one that's gonna be easily manipulated. Like not just this season, but like in, when she first got on the show, people always felt like. Um, that she was going to be like easy manipulated, like quiet or, oh, she's quirky and has this like, little, you know, quirk. So she's never going to have that like voice to uh, defend herself. Right. Mm -hmm. And she sat there and she went head to head with everybody. I think she did a great job uh, on doing so. Sadly, she has to go to the hospital. But I do think that if she was still there, she would have had like the same um, reaction or the same uh, response to what Kathy was supposed to be bringing, you know, to the table. You know, yeah. whatever conversation she needed to have with Son, I'm pretty sure she would have had it and solved it right there, right? Yeah. Uh, but we didn't get to see that because for you know for for her medical uh, issues. Um, but I'm I'm very happy for the way that she performed. I think it showed that she is evolving as a housewife too. You know, uh, and that's what I like on a housewife that they come on the show uh, and they just stay, the, they, they just don't stay the same the whole entire time. That they evolve, they show different layers and they grow with the show. Like they, they, you know, they start in one way and then they uh, become stronger as the time goes by. Yep. That is just like what I think. There is another yeah, no, question. I, from I, I, I agree. I agree with you. I think Sutton did also like a great, great job. Like I told you, like if she if she wouldn't have gone, she would have started stand her ground, you know, and do what she needed to do. And uh, and I think I mean I think it has been a time for the introvert queens around Bravo. Like so many of them are really finding their voice. You know, it's showing that you don't have to be super obnoxious. You know, like this huge personality in order to like be good on reality tv and and, and gave us great entertainment you know so i, I think agree. like um i love that part um of them and uh i think next season is going to be really good i know they're going to start filming soon so i think it's it's right now a lot of drama is brewing you know yeah so i think it's definitely going to be an explosion and i think next season like i said is going to be better you know and i think it's good they're gonna keep like surprising us for sure um another question here from Aaron: best part or scene of the season mm. let me just try to go through the whole season very quickly but i think like to me i love the spain trip so much what we were saying same i, I think same. um i have i have this huge thing because i literally was on barcelona and they arrived the next day after I left. <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, I was like, I remember like, like texting to, to some of them. Like, why is it like, I, I literally wouldn't have changed my, my, my trip if I, if I wouldn't have known that they were going to stay there. But and Barcelona is such a beautiful city. And I think they, what they did over there, it really helped them, you know, connect on a different level. And I think it was, I think it was an interesting trip, you know. I think uh, they gave us drama, and I think they gave us um, sisterhood, like we were saying before, you know. Like, they really showed us and dancing and laughing. And it was a very enjoyable and watchable uh, trip, you know. I agree. I was going to say exactly the same thing. I said it before. Uh, to me, uh, my opinion on this trip is that it was one of the best trips that we have had in a long time. It was mm -hmm. fun. They had a little drama, but it, they were enjoying the moment. Even Anne Marie was having a good time, even though she was trying to start the drama when it was so unnecessary to do. Um, they they passed the, and they you know they decided to keep having fun. So that's what it made this uh, part of the show even more watchable. Was because they had the issues, they moved from it. And they still had a good time. Or like, you know, 
immersed it's in the purse to me was so freaking hysterical that I laugh every time that I, I I say that like I started to use it for the most random stuff because it's so funny you know Spain gave us such a funny moment and also it it, it showed that yeah they, they 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 might have problems back home but they still gave them some the chance to enjoy the trip something that we haven't seen in a while because every single trip that we had for the past few seasons it was so dramatic and so heavy mm. that instead of creating bonds between the ladies it was making it even worse for them to feel yeah. i think yeah. so um yeah definitely a trip to spain and um let's move to miami real quick i just want to touch on it very very quickly what do you think about this season favorite housewife this season and favorite moment at the reunion look i feel that miami has been doing no wrong for me since they yeah. come back i think the show is honestly one of the best shows uh, the best housewife shows you know uh they they are friends they are like they are like real sisters they really fight hard i don't know if it's because of the Latino component there that, you know, it's more passionate and we can like really fight and then be like, oh, whatever, you know, but like <laughs> it's, 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 it's a little bit different, you know, and uh, I feel that they really brought it. I, I know that the ratings are not quite there, you know, but I, and I, I don't quite understand. I think they're actually putting them after Beverly Hills uh, didn't work that good. I think they should have their own night. I agree. You know, and I think they should have their own promotions and I think they should have, you know, their own pool. And I feel that also the move from Peacock to Bravo, I don't know if it was the smartest thing to do just because of that, because Peacock was giving them really a lot of like uh, importance, you know, like they really were like, we're going to push you, girl. Bra yeah. Bravo, they become like literally like the last thing that they worry about because they have so many other things to like really pushed before you know yeah um i uh, look i don't know i like i honestly i will always love to me i love alexia marisol adriana nicole julia kiki uh even lisa hushton sometimes like i really like i really enjoy all of these girls my yeah. least favorites are like larsa and gordy i i think i have never been able to connect with either of them you know so i'm like whatever but like <laughs> But even though with everything, they they also bring a lot of drama, you know. So mm -hmm. I, I cannot be mad. I just I, I'm just on a personal level, I cannot connect with them. But I think that it works for the show. Now I know a lot of people are starting to be like, well, it has been already like three seasons. Should we start like having new blood or like you know make some kind of changes? I don't know. I mean, I feel that maybe I I, I think for example, I would love to see Kiki being a, a mojito holder i think she has a lot to offer you mm -hmm. know and i think she she really deserve it i think that larsa if, if i if i were gonna fire people it will be larsa i think that she's not really like giving us things other than you know being obsessed with marcus jordan you know <laughs> and uh and yeah i don't know i don't get it and i will make Gordy a friend of the show and bring maybe a new host i think those are the changes that are you know I would do, but I, I, I honestly, I'm enjoying it. I think it's a great show. The reunion was great, but I also didn't understand the whole, like putting the reunion, like the two parts, right. like one after the other, you know, and it was like a mess, you know, like, I don't know what happened over there. Someone was having a nervous breakdown in, at Bravo or something because it was, it was like weird, you know, it was like, it didn't make a lot of sense, but I feel that moving forward, they are learning how to deal with these women. Uh, but they know it. Like, look what Alexia did with Andy Cohen and Washington's life. It is true. Why they have to be always second? Why they have to be like the little sister that you have to bring because your mom told you to? You know, I like agree. you have to like they 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 are big enough to stand on their self. You know, so I, um, I think that and the reunion. Well, of course, the finale was everything. I mean, Julia singing with uh, with this guy and like making the whole thing. Um, the theatrics <laughs> of Adriana, like once it's okay, but was when she started like doing it all the time, now it becomes like weird to me, you know. Yeah. Um, I agree. But yeah, yeah no, the whole hey. the whole thing with the Bible, I was like, girl, sit down. Yeah. <laughs> sit down. <laughs> 
Yeah, because no, that thought... was like a joke, you know. Like last season was okay with the the the, the letter from the letter uh, to 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 the liver. You know? Yeah, that was funny, you know. But this one, she tried to do it like two or three times, and I was like, oh, Adriana, come on, you know, like. like... I was like, Adriana, you know that I love you, but I like, yeah, like find a new thing because it's just like it's not hitting the same way. It was yeah. kind of annoying too. So I think even Andy was annoyed at one point. <laughs> like, yeah. like, you, like, you sit down, sit down. Well, you were um, for so long like that, and now you want to read something from the Bible. I'm like, oh, you know, like, <laughs> um, I, I, I do like. The cast as an ensemble, like everybody on the cast. Uh, obviously, Larsa to me it's uh, a waste of mojito. Give her mojito to somebody else. A Kiki mm. deserved the mojito. Even Adriana deserved that mojito. She does more for the show than Larsa, yeah. right? Um, that's the only thing that I would change. But I do think that this group of women have such a very uh, intertwined kind of relationship that. I don't see a reason why to remove one completely off the show. Mm -hmm. I don't think that we need new blood right now. Many shows have gone with the same cast for like for four years. or five seasons, yeah. and we're still liking them. Yes, yeah, you can bring a new friend. You can do something like that. But I, I think that all these women that are right now on the show have a lot to offer and a lot yeah. of life experiences to share with the, with the public. We, they're not like... Like repeating their 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 life over and over again, they always bring something different to the show. Um, I do agree that the moving uh, Miami to P from Peacock to Bravo was a big mistake. I said it, said the moment that it was announced, I been very vocal about it because Bravo has way too many shows to focus on. The mm -hmm. Miami is always going to be treated like you know, like you said, like the little sister that nobody wants to see because yeah. she's annoying. You know. Yeah. Uh, But Miami is really the one that is bringing the most drama, the more consistent fashion, the more consistent like uh, relationship with, between the cast. I mean, it's just such an amazing show. Um, I, I would say move it back to Peacock, let them handle it, let them give them the prime you know, time that they deserve. Um, look what happened to Traders. Like Traders is amazing because they knew how to market it, right? Yeah. That's what... That's what Miami needs right now. Uh, and Peacock was kind of giving it to them, right? Moving uh, Miami to, to Bravo was uh, putting Miami against, like, the crown jewels of Bravo, like New Jersey, New York, Atlanta, Beverly Hills, Orange County, you know? And mm -hmm. now you have Salt Lake City, who's also shining on his own. And you have Potomac, even though this season we're not going to talk about it because it's, nothing <laughs> is happening. Literally, like, Potomac is just so down. Like, yeah, like, no, we're not even talking about it. It's like you know, it doesn't even <laughs> exist. That's yeah. how sad it is this season, right? But still, Potomac is still it's one of you know Bravo's concerns and and, and crown jewels, right? Um, yeah. Miami just does it deserves so much more. It deserves so much more. Um, and I hope the next season they go back to Peacock. I would rather them. You know, be moved back to Peacock, give them the money for for big publicity, give them money for big like promotions and stuff like that, like promos and do the whole thing because they are by far one of the best housewife franchises. Mm -hmm. And it will be sad to see them cancel because Bravo didn't know how to you know promote it. Yeah, I agree, a hundred percent. I agree with you. I think yeah, you know that's what I, mean. I would rather. I would rather. Bravo to cancel, I'm sorry to say this, but Atlanta that gave us nothing last season. Or Potomac that is giving nothing this season. Or Orange County, who barely made it last season, too. Like, last season was better, but it, it didn't mean that it was like, oh, my God, this is a groundbreaking season. Yeah. And it's like Salt Lake City. I mean, I thought it was going to get canceled after season three because season three was a, a huge disaster, right? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I mean... If Miami is performing on its own, give it their own night. I do believe that if they want to keep it on Bravo, Bravo better give Miami their own night. Yeah. Yeah, I just don't get it. I think I, well, did they did the last seat. I don't remember. But yeah, I think they that they have to. They have to give her their own night. They There are many nights with many, no, nothing happened on those nights. Like the whole, I understand that they wanted to put like the, the crowd of Berry Hills pull it into Miami. 
But I also believe that sometimes we are watching an episode of uh, whatever franchise, and sometimes you take your energy away, you know? Yeah. And you just don't want to be watching another Housewife franchise. Right? Same. You I know? agree. It's so, exhausting. It's exhausting sometimes. And, you know, Miami, they, they also know how to fight that. That's a lot of energy that you have to put into a screen <laughs> to your TV. So <laughs> they definitely need to, like, like give it at their own night. You know what's really you know what's really funny though? Like the only housewife show that's airing right now is Potomac. Oh wow, yeah. Crazy. <laughs> we don't have plans of like a new housewife until New Jersey. Until New Jersey next month. Wow. Next month, right? That's April? so weird. Having they have literally Dubai sitting right there doing nothing. <laughs> <laughs> like... <laughs> We're gonna watch Dubai until the summer. That's such a long wait. The next, the next show they're gonna be premiering as Housewife are uh, New Jersey and Orange County. New Jersey and Orange, and Orange County. County still filming. Yeah, they're just like super behind. I, I think they're not filming New York. New York I starts, think. Uh, I think, uh, next month. Filming. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what they're doing over there. And Salt Lake City just started recently. Yeah. So. It's it, it's like what 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 shows are we gonna be watching? I mean, I know we're gonna have um, Summer House Martha's Vineyard premiere uh, next week on the twenty fourth, right? Um, but that's but besides before. but besides the what else? I mean, uh, the ballet is coming next week, oh. and <laughs> I think uh, I, I I mean I'm gonna be watching it, but I am not kind of sold in. Into yeah, it. yeah. Like I, I gonna... kind of like um, I kind of like um because I was thinking about this the other day. Um, one of the things that really, really made me a fan of Vanderpump Rules was that when it started, it was the concept was you know these people on their late twenties or you know early thirties, a uh, uh, very early thirties, like trying to make it in Los Angeles, you know, and like the whole thing. And I felt very related to that back then, you know, because I was like basically doing the same thing. Just so I was like, yeah. oh yeah. Now, the premise of this show is, as millennials, many of us, and our theories now, you know, we still are trying to figure shit out, we, but now we're married, or we have, like, some kind of families, and we're still here in L.A. trying to figure this shit out, because this, these are very L.A.-based shows. So I'm, yeah. I'm like, mm, okay, then maybe I could relate to them a little bit, you know, like, I, I'm kind of like, I'm, of course, I'm not. I'm not like a super fan right now because the only thing, the only ones that I know are Jackson and Brittany and Kristen, you know. But I'm like, okay, let's see, let's see what they're gonna bring, you know. I mean, who knows? I think, for example, Southern Hospitality like really surprised me a lot, and they really made me like a believer again. So, so <laughs> I, I'm, I'm like, okay, let's see, let's see what how how this one is gonna go. I'm, I'm gonna give them a chance and see what happens. Yeah, that's how I feel. I'm just gonna give them a chance to see what happens. Yeah. Um, talking about shows like that, Summer House and Vanderpump Rules this season. I think Summer House is outperforming Vanderpump Rules, even though Vanderpump Rules is getting obviously the more the higher ratings and stuff like that. Um, I think whoever is doing casting in Summer House hit. A hunt wrong with these two new guys with uh, West and Jesse. I think uh, it balanced the house too because last season it was yeah. all women. <laughs> it was all women and it was all boring. Like there was no partying. The, everyone was going to bed at like 7 p.m. I was like, <laughs> what, the, what, what is happening over here? Like I don't want to see Amanda and Paige on, in, in bed all day long. Like that's not a thing for me. Like I watch Summer House because these people are supposed to be in fun, having fun during the summer. You know, and the only one who wants to have fun is Kyle all the time. And no one was like having fun last season. So I was I know. Like, last season I grilled them so hard because I was like, <laughs> I don't get this shit. Like I don't understand it, you know. And they 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 went on with the drama of Danielle and all of that. But I was like, is that really enough? You know, but this season, even though we know we have the drama of Lindsay and Carl happening, you know, um, all like you said, it, it's a nice balance. These two guys have an amazing energy. You know, yeah. they really are like, okay, let's let's make things happen. Let's party again. Let's go out and 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 and, the and they fit will... right in with the OGs. They they, yeah. they like fit yeah. in immediately. It's not like it's awkward. It's like Chris last season. Like I like Chris, 
but he always felt like a little awkward in, in the interaction with the other yeah. people. The yeah. same thing happened with Alex, you know, the one that was before, you know, Chris uh, in the previous season. He was the personal trainer. He also was like a little awkward. I mean, he was really fucking hot, but it didn't feel like a piece of the puzzle, right? It always felt yeah. like off, right? But Wes and, and Jesse, they fit right in. They they make sense, you know? It's kind of weird. The, it feels like they've been on the show longer than yeah. just three it episodes. Yeah, uh, kind of like, you know, that time with Luke and Andrea, like, and all of that, like that, that everyone was kind of like friends with everyone, you know? Yes. I think even Paige said it on the last episode. She said something like, you feel so natural. I think now we're friends forever, you know? And I think yeah. that that's what it was needed. You know, someone that these girls can just like, okay, let's be ourselves. Let's just, and maybe also that's why it was so boring last season because they didn't want, were like um, comfortable enough, you know, maybe around some of the people in the house. Okay. I don't know, you know, like to the point that I, 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 Paige has always like annoyed me a little bit, but this season I'm, I, I'm actually more pro Paige that I was <laughs> on, on, on last season, you know? So right now, the only one that is kind of like boring, but I think that personality just never going to change is Amanda because she definitely doesn't like to like party and like go out and do anything, you know? But having one person like that is is fine. But like when everyone is doing the same shit, it's like, why are we even watching this show? Just go <laughs> home and sleep in your house, you know? So, <laughs> so oh this is good. This is good, yeah. <laughs> I mean, what was what are your opinions on the whole Carl and Lindsay? I mean, we knew about <laughs> you know the breakup and Carl calling off the wedding, and uh, at that point, I was kind of like more like leaning on the team Lindsay uh, train. Yeah. But as I'm watching this season, I'm like, okay, I mean. I this can the see thing. that both of them needed yeah. to work on the relationship, but Lynn's is not coming out any good. This is the thing, and I that I am giving Lindsay a little bit of grace until we really understand what is going on. Um, I don't. I mean, they. I think. She, I mean, they have not mentioned any of this. I don't know if that, that's it, even a thought on, on on her mind, but I don't know if you have had addicts on your family. Like I have had addicts in my family before. And sometimes these people become masters of deception, you know? And sometimes when they're using, you know, and the thing is like we have only seen Carl on Summer House, you know? And we only seen Carl, like maybe we had an idea that maybe he was consuming here or maybe he was doing something there, but we never really saw like a, like a prompt that said, here Carl was on drugs, you know? Like we have never really seen that. while. Lindsay and Kyle and some of the friends that have been friends for like over a decade now have a better understanding of who he is, you know, and they really know, okay, there is something off right now here, you know. Yes, Lindsay likes attention. That is not a secret, you know, and Lindsay like really, really could be a very like strong personality to deal with. So that's, I don't know why my mind goes there. I don't, I'm like, is she seeing something that she just don't want to say because it will be worse for Carl, you know, in order, because yes, it is a big accusation to say to a sober person, like, are you sober? Are you on something, you know? But mm -hmm. also, is she seeing something that we are not, you know? And is she not saying it because of it, it will be worse for him? I don't know. You know, the only thing that I do know is that living, uh, having gone through, uh, knowing someone who was on that path and who have, you know, uh, falling, how you say that? all of the wagon and stuff like that, you know, like these people, sometimes they can really lie their ass off, you know, and they get aggressive and they get like, how could you say that? You know, I will never do that. You know, and they're very defensive, you know, and all of that. So I'm like, I don't know, maybe, yes, it's not, it's not a right call. And if, if there is no, nothing of this at all, it will be bad for Lindsay, you know, uh, but I also, we also, I think we know by now that, yes, anyways, Carl did call the producers to film him breaking up with Lindsay, <laughs> which I think it's a shitty thing to do still, you know? Like, if we well, go to the I breaking mean, up of the, of the engagement, you know, I think it's a, a big betrayal. Like, why why would you humiliate me like this in front of, like, a, a, the whole world, you know? Uh, 
I, I, I think the both of them were not ready for that relationship. I said it last season when people yeah. were going after Danielle because Danielle said, like, this is moving too fast. And I said, I agree with Danielle because it doesn't matter if you know the person for 10 years as a friend. When you get in a relationship, that is a whole different level and a different layer to the relationship, right? It's not the same being friends with somebody for 10 years and then starting dating them and then get married like a, like a few months yeah. later. That is insane to me because the dynamic of a friendship versus the dynamic of being a couple are two different dynamics. And it might be great. You might be great with somebody as friends, but you are horrible as a couple. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And that's what yeah. I think happened to, to Lindsay and Carl that they might have been great at friends and they might have fun once in a while and they rush into this relationship because maybe we both, they both needed it. They maybe needed that comfort or they needed that like person to be there. And maybe Carl needed somebody to like, to like join him in his journey of sobriety and maybe Lynn seemed just somebody just to be there because she likes to be in a relationship. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And they found that on each other, but now they outgrew that part and that's why it fell apart. It's yeah. completely okay. I do think that they both were not ready to get married. And they just found any excuse to sabotage their own relationship. Um, I do think that Lindsay is not looking good right now. Because accusing somebody that is um, on, on a sobriety journey that they're using. It's a huge accusation. And it's quite disrespectful, right? especially for somebody who is obviously drunk in the moment yeah. that they say it right yeah, it's yeah. not a good look uh it's also like it's not i read somewhere that people were saying that um people are trying to villainize Lindsay. i'm like it's, this is not about villainizing anybody it's this about seeing people on a show being human beings human beings make mistakes and accusing somebody of being on something when they are sober is a mistake then we're gonna be talking about it. It's not a. It's, that's not making her a villain. That's making her a human being, right? Yeah. That's what we're talking about. Uh, same thing with Carl. We need to like, like you said, we need to wait and see how this develops because also calling producers to film it is quite the shitty thing to do. But he, if he didn't do that, I'm sure many fans will be like, why they break up in silence? Like, why? <laughs> what, you know? Oh yeah, I mean they cannot they cannot do right anyway. Exactly. But I, do, I, I I think that um, look, I think that Carl and Lindsay are not for each other. I honestly, mm. from the moment that they got together, I was like, and like you said, I mean Lindsay, he, she's always dying to have that family. She's always having that social pressure on her of like. I need to get married. I need to have kids. I need to like do all of this right now. You know, I, I think that was the main thing. And to be very honest with you, Lindsay, she, can, I mean, she's not an alcoholic. She can drink whatever she wants. She can do whatever she yeah. wants, you know? And I think there are different kinds of like alcoholic or, or drug addicts or whatever, you know? And I think we can, you can have people that are okay with going, you know, partying with other people or being around people, you know, being stupid and drunk or whatever. There are people that cannot be in that environment. And I believe that Carl cannot be really in that environment. Like he's putting himself through it because of the show, you know, because what it is. But I think he will thrive so much more if he, if he was on a full on sober environment, surrounded by sober friends, you know, and at least for a while, because it, it, it's very hard. That, that, like, look, he's even, he even quit Lover Boy because of the same, you know, uh, situation. And I think being with someone, who clearly does not want to be sober and doesn't have to be sober, you know, like it's 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 not gonna work out. And I was like, this is not gonna work out, you know. I think that they, of course, they rush into things, and yeah, I mean, and I like we saw it last season. Last season they worked because Lindsay was trying to be sober. Mm -hmm. Like she will drink like a glass here and there but you you will see her like yeah i'm not drinking tonight because i, I want to be yeah. sober with carl and this is she's like i don't give a fuck i'm gonna <laughs> drink i'm gonna pass out i'm gonna i'm gonna she, she doesn't you know, have she, to look if, she, she if you don't have, have a problem to. with alcohol like why exactly. do you, why do i have to stop drinking you know like she she, she doesn't <laughs> have to do anything right yeah so it, it breakups and calling off marriages and weddings and stuff that's happens every day in this planet so it's not like a big deal we just gotta 
talk about it in a way that like we understand where these people are coming from. Like I said yeah. before, this is not about villainizing Lindsay or or villainizing Carl or anything. It's just understanding what happened. And I mean, just because we watch the show, not because we are <laughs> it's yeah. somehow our our opinions yeah. is not gonna change the life whatsoever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness! Uh, real quick, bend upon rules. Um, your thoughts and opinions on this season because it's been quite the, it's been a hard watch, if you ask me. Oh, it's just like so to me. I just don't even know how to put this, but I think I am not team anyone. <laughs> like I am not team Sandoval. I'm not team Ariana. I am not team Rachel. Like I, I like I don't really care about any of them at this point. You know. I I I know a lot a lot of the people who are very obsessed with Ariana. They want everything to be Ariana, surrounding Ariana's thing, you know. And I I, I believe that she is living her best life. She is thriving. She got all the the deals and the money that she deserved, you know. She. Uh, find a new guy, you know, she's doing great in life, you know, and um, some of the, some of the comments that I read are so much like, like they put Ariana in such a big pedestal, you know, for being uh, cheated on that. I, I, I don't know if this is because of all the women that have been cheated on in life or like, like what really went through this, you know, but like it, it was like so big and, and then I'm watching the show and I'm like, I don't know, you know, like I, my, for example, my personality is, and I, and I have gone through like things like this. Like, I will never make people choose between me and the other person. I will never say like, if you hang out with that person, like you cannot, like I, I don't want anything to do with you. Uh, I will, uh, but that's just me, you know. And I'm not saying that she's not entitled to that behavior because those are her feelings, and she can do whatever she wants to do. But I believe that people also need to be giving grace to all of the other character who, to me, were in fact affected by a scandal as well. You know, these are not random people. These are a very close, tight group of friends, you know, who went through something like this. Again, I can't talk about this because on my group of friends that I had, we went through like almost the exact same situation without the million of people following us, you know? So, <laughs> so having two, two friends who are a couple that we all love and then one cheat on the other one and then it's kind of like, shit, what, how this is going to happen? And this is, this affect the whole group to the point that the group in itself ended because it was just too much to deal, you know? They, one of them didn't want anything to do with it. It was so weird, you know? And the same thing is happening over here. Ariana is saying, Oh, Tom Sandoval is trying to ice me out. I don't know how he's trying to ice you out when you are the one who are telling the world and no one can be friends with him. You know, Ariana needs need to be a little bit more chill and needs to be a little bit more like, at the end of the day, you need to be a realistic person. This is a show. Tom Sandoval is not going to get fired because he has a restaurant with Lisa Vanderpump. Okay? So that that is not going to happen unless he do something really bad like, kill someone you know but cheating on something is not a reason to fire anyone because everyone has cheated on anyone of everyone on this show you know so she needs to be realistic like tom sandoval is not gonna be fired so what happened tom sandoval is gonna start hanging out with other people you cannot create a division inside of a, of a show that works uh, as a group you know because the producers are not gonna allow that to happen you know they need everyone to be hanging out together all the time in order to create the show so you have someone, that's why in Housewife, no one can say, like, I will not film with that person. Okay, we don't give a shit. You have to, you know? So, <laughs> so <laughs> the same thing over here. And Ariana is pushing hard and pushing hard, you know, with Katie next to her, like, pushing hard on this hate. Again, she can hate him. That's fine. No one is telling her to, like, go and be best friends, you know, and braid her at night. No. But you have to, you have to deal with the fact that he's going to be part of the show. And that he's not gonna get fired, and you putting yourself in that position is making her less likable. That's why she said from the beginning, 
I know a lot of people are going to be turning on me. Of course, of course, people are going to be turning on Ariana because that behavior is, is not a dull behavior and it's not reality TV star behavior because this is not real life. You know, there is no way for you to like really create a clean cut from Tom Sandoval from your life. It's just not going to happen. So now what happened is that you are looking entitled. The faces that you make are weird. You're talking all this shit on the confessionals and, and, the, and the after shows. What do you think is going to happen? You know, a, a lot of people are being like, mm. and look, we need to be very honest here. Ariana has never been the number one girl on the group. You know, before Scandoval, it's not like people were being like, oh, Team Ariana forever. We love you. No, people were Team Stasi. People were Team Sheena. Well, no, I said Sheena, no, but like Team Lala, you know, or Team like uh, or whatever, Sheena. like any of the. Yeah, because for some reason, Sheena has never been able to like really uh, be 100% likable. And um, and that's just uh, just that's just the way it is. So yes, she she got all of her support because yes, what Tom Sandoval was shitty, what Raquel did was disgusting, you know. And we all gonna support you because you are the scorn woman right here, right now, who got cheated in such a horrible situation. And you get to the in the point that social media exploded, the whole world is talking about it. But at the end of the day, if you go to the root of it, it was just another cheating scandal, and eventually. It's just going to happen. We saw it with Kristen. She ended up being part of the group again. You know, we, like, even Ariana cheated as well, you know, with, with Tom Sandoval, you know, with, 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 with Schwartz, with Jax, with, with, like, absolutely everyone has cheated on this show. You know, Lala, James, you know, so it's just part of the show. So to think that that's going to change and that the whole world needs to succumb to her reign you know, just because she got a bunch of, of deals is not realistic because it's going to work for a little period of time. But then people are going to be like, do I really need to follow you anymore? Like if you are not like being likable, if you are not really maintaining your your thing into the group, because right now, like James, it's kind of like doing her own thing. Lala is doing her own thing. Gina is doing her own thing. Short, Sandoval, you know, and they're going to end up creating their whole group. and. She is the one icing herself out. Honestly, like Sandoval is not going to have to do anything at this point, you know, because she's the one who is being like, I don't want to be there. Oh my God, I don't want to talk to him. I don't want to be on that party. I don't want to, like, okay, don't be. No one is making you do it. But guess what? The rest of the world, they want the cloud. They want to go to the events. They want to keep being part of the cast. Do you think that they're going to choose the choose you over the fame and money? That's not going to happen, you know? So. <laughs> That, that's, that's my stance on Vanderpump rule. And also, like, I, uh, when it comes to Sheena, I do believe that what Sheena went through is very traumatic. And again, I don't know, it's because I'm connecting what happened to me with her because it was very similar. But I am like, I understand how being friends with, really best friends with someone who did such a horrible thing can affect you. And I don't think, Sheena has never, well, now it's different, but like, from the scandal to like the beginning, she has never really been like, oh, fuck Ariana. No, she has always been like, Team Ariana, Team Ariana. And she's literally sacrificing her friendship with Tom Sandoval to be on Team Ariana, you know? So I, I have always said, yes, she deserves to feel whatever she is feeling. She deserves to grieve that process, you know? And if she eventually ends up forgiving Sandoval, like I'm very sure everyone else is going to end up doing. So what, you know, if Ariana is a really, really friend with uh, Sheena, she will be doing, uh, the, the only thing that Ariana needs to do is like, look, do whatever you want to do. Just don't talk about Tom Sandoval in my presence, period, you know, and then you move I mean, on from that. I, I do believe that that's, that's what she wants. That's, that's what Ariana at the end wants, to, like at the end of this, um, because like like you said like uh, she also understands that she can't change how this uh, show is produced, right? Um, I do think that this season was so rushed into film right after the scandal and the reunion that the emotions that she was feeling were so fresh that it was hard for her to like uh, be more understanding of all the people's feelings. But she was still going through her own feelings too as well. Um, 
that's why when in the last episode when she was talking to Lala, she's like, and Lala's like, oh, you have to understand. And she's like, yeah, I understand what you're saying. I'm just creating my own boundaries right now. Like, if you want to be friends with him, go ahead. But don't, like, make me want to hang out with him and, like, talk to me about him. And, like, like I don't want to know anything about that. Like, we live in the same house and I don't even talk to him. I talk through through Anna. You know, you know. let me let me just say something here that it comes to my mind very quickly. That is true. And she's really trying to do that. But she also has Katie on her ear a lot. And Katie, Katie. has pure hate for sandoval and schwartz you know well you know so look look I, we have not seen a lot of ariana like grilling sheena or anyone about tom sandoval but who is the one that's always there being like i don't understand why you're doing this like why are you why are you uh, hanging out with this disgusting uh, person with this horrible human being you know and i believe that you know uh, she's she's on her ear a lot my Yes, you. I, I understand what you're saying. That's what I say, yes. Ariana, she can do whatever she wants. She can establish all the boundaries that she needs, you know, because no one is taking away from the fact that Sandoval and Raquel are pieces of shit and what they did was horrible, you know. But at the end of the day, again, you are on a reality TV show that if you don't play the game by its own rules, then you're the one, you're the going to be the one who is going to end up being out. You know, mm-hmm. and 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 the public in general, the viewers are so easily manipulatable that just as everyone rooted for Ariana at the beginning, the moment that everyone forgives Tom Sandoval, people are going to go with the flow. You know, and then you go through the other side. Oh, yeah. and if Ariana gets fired or decided to leave the show, and the show continues for another ten years, people are not gonna give a shit. You know, like you are just gonna like forget and move on. So um, I don't know. I think there is. There, it, it, it's just about like like knowing how to play the game. Yes, it is your life, and yes, it is reality reality TV. You know, but at the end of the day, you cannot go so far because the producers are not going to allow it to happen. You know. Yeah. I do believe that this is. I have a feeling though that this is going to be the send off of this cast. This Maybe season. you know I have I, I I heard a lot about that you know that I think this season might be kind of like the season to restart by the phone rules with a new cast. Most of the cast are gonna be moved to the valley because already two couples from the valley are out, and those <laughs> spaces are probably gonna be filled by like Lala and and Sheena who mm-hmm. already purchased homes in the in the valley. Yeah. Yeah. So. I do think that the the show as we know it is gonna change next season. I do believe that, and maybe that's why we had seen so many like kind of like they they are doing their own thing outside the show now more than ever because they yeah. need to like be prepared for the show to be different. Yeah. Um. And like I said, like I I I I'm not. A fan of Tom Sandoval, period. I'm not a fan. I don't like him. I, I'm actually very disappointed with the way that he he behaved after the fact that he cheated. Like he hasn't taken accountability or anything. Like he still acts like a weirdo. Um, I, 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 when I see that those scene where he's saying like I love Raquel and all this stuff, and I do like, like you are forty. Like, act like it. Like, have, like, some, like, ma- maturity to, like, take responsibility and realize that you were pretty much manipulating this young girl. Like, mm-hmm. I'm not saying that Rachel either is a saint. I mean, she's an adult. But you can tell that the person putting the strings on, in this situation was definitely sustainable. You know, he was the adult. He, he was manipulating this, this this person. And he was stringing along Ariana in the process too because if he wanted to cheat on her and leave her he could have easily have said you know what let's end this and I'm gonna do my own thing and you do your own thing right but obviously he's a ballless man like he didn't have the balls to like either break up with one or you know uh, do the right thing by the other one because look uh, Rachel blocked him because she knew like hey I don't want to do any. I don't want to deal with you like you freaking crazy man you know um also, I'm, I'm happy that Ariana is having the success she has because um, 
when when people are cheated on, they tend to grieve in a way that they completely disconnect with the world and mm -hmm. they don't want to deal with anything and they feel that the world fall apart. And yes, I'm pretty sure she had that time to grieve and like, you know, cry and 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 do the thing that we do when we're grieving, but she didn't just stay in there. She took any opportunity that it was presented and worked hard for it. So that's why when people say, oh, she's making money, she's all over the place. Well, guess what? Good for her. Because um, that's what people should do. You should grab the opportunities and run with it, right? I'm happy for Sheena that she had the chance to like, you know, like do whatever she does. I don't know what she's doing, but she seems to be to be doing a lot of stuff with yeah. social media and Lala's rebranded and James had a DJ because at the end of the day, these people, all of them are getting something from the exposure that the show got last season. And like I said before, they're doing it right now because I do believe that it might be coming to an end for all these people in the show. Yeah. Yeah, I I, 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 I can't believe that, you know, and now we're going to have like uh, Vanderpump Villa, which also actually looked good. So I'm going to like that. so good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know how it's going to be going to Hulu to watch it, but like, because we're so like into Bravo, but like it's definitely going to be watching because I, I, I think it's, it's going to be an, a very original um, formula and maybe, yeah, I, I, I believe that Vanderpump Rules needs to be completely rebooted, you know, yeah. like completely rebooted. Uh, because I do believe that the formula works when you have people who are young and naive and who are there and starving, for Lisa Vanderpump, you know, and starving That's, for yeah. the camera. For because the like camera. They, 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 this, this cast already, like they pick when they were working for, mm -hmm. for Lisa Vanderpump, right? Yeah. That was when they were working hard for that check. That's when they were working hard for the exposure. But now yep. they already have brands on their own. Like they don't even care for Lisa Vanderpump anymore. Like about her opinion because they're grown as people, right? Mm -hmm. They're like when when like if you watch what happened live, Andy asked like, "So what do you think about Lisa Vanderpump doing this or like saying this?" And they're like, oh, "Okay, I mean, yeah, it's like no. we don't care anymore." Yeah. yeah, I mean that we need to go back to the root of the show that it was servers, bartenders trying to make it in Hollywood. Because look mm. what happened to Southern Charm. It's working because this this group of young people are starving for 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 oh, this yeah. moment, for that you know, for for that reality TV moment. For because they are working in a restaurant, because they are bartenders, they are working at this club, and this exposure is gonna help them build whatever comes next in their lives. Mm -hmm. So they are yep. working hard and giving us a lot because this last season was absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. So that's what we need back on Vendapon Rules. Go back to the restaurants because I know for a fact that there's a lot of people who work for, for Lisa who are made for TV. And, they, and I'm pretty sure they're working on it because they've been putting a lot of stuff on like the in, in the the restaurant social media, like they, they, they kind of like featuring more and more the same waiters and bartenders. So I, I started to sense what they're trying to do. Yeah. I hope that that's, that that's we're going to move on because I do love Vanderpump Rules. And you know, I love Lisa Vanderpump. So like, I want to just watch her on everything forever that she does forever. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. Let's see. Let's see what's going to be next for, for Vanderpump Rules. For now, I'm excited for the Valley. I think, I think, look, Jax is great reality TV, and Kristen is she used to be great reality TV, you know. So let's see how all of these other personalities are gonna work out. Like you said, we already know that one of them is already like getting divorced or being separated, you know. Yep. Um. So, but I'm I'm interesting, you know. I mean, in in the like they literally are saying the next chapter of Vanderpump Rules. That's how they're marketing here. Yeah. Uh, the Valley. So. That's, that's why I think that for the season two of The Valley, which I think is already greenlit, um, we're going to see many faces from Pentapon Rules Moving. in The Valley. Yeah. Okie dokes. Okay, we, we talk about a lot of stuff tonight. So, yeah. <laughs> Andy, tell me, tell me, where can people find you? What you want to promote? This is your time. It's your space. Go ahead. All right, guys. So, um, yeah, I talk about Bravo, reality TV, pop culture, everything that is happening all the time. 
So um, I have my podcast that you can find it on Spotify or anywhere else you get your podcast. It's called Let's Talk About This Mess. And of course, if you want the little pieces every single day on my YouTube, The Real Andy of Burberry Hills, you can find me uh, in there as well. And yeah, that's pretty much it. That's what I'm doing right now. Well, of course, social media, but that's... <laughs> <laughs> well, and as you guys know, you can find me across the platforms as Martini with Eddie on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok while he lasts, um, <laughs> uh, podcast, YouTube, Martini with Eddie. Uh, please, please go follow Andy. Go follow me. Uh, like, subscribe. That's how we survive as content creators. So uh, any love and support is always appreciated. Okay, guys, it's, it's been a lot. There's a lot of Bravo content coming. There's a lot of shows coming. And I'm hopefully... Hopefully we get to see uh, new shows too. Like we need some new new blood in the Bravo universe. So I'm I'm here for it. Mm -hmm. right. Okay, Andy. All right. Thank you for having me. Thank you guys. Have a great weekend already or week. I don't know. But yeah. <laughs> and, uh... Okay, guys. Okay, okay. Always care. say bye, besties. Bye. Well, besties.